This instructional video is intended for families, caregivers, and medical staff caring for a child with a tracheostomy. The terms patient and child are used interchangeably in this video. Today we're here to demonstrate pediatric tracheostomy management. The skills we will show you today you can use either at home or in the hospital setting. A tracheostomy may be a temporary or permanent situation. Here are some possible reasons for a tracheostomy. Need for long-term use of a ventilator, a machine that helps you breathe. Obstruction in the airway due to an accident, paralysis, surgery, or a congenital abnormality of the upper airway or if you have a need for frequent sectioning of secretions in the airway. This is a side view of how a tracheostomy works. The surgery is done in an operating room. The surgeon creates a small opening in the neck called a stoma. The tracheostomy tube is put into the stoma. One end of the tracheostomy tube rests outside of the stoma, the other end rests inside the windpipe. When your child breathes in, air goes through the tube into the trachea to the lungs. When your child breathes out, air comes out of the tracheostomy tube. Your child can still also breathe in and out through his or her nose. When taking care of a patient with a tracheostomy, you may have different sized trachs that you would be dealing with. For instance, this is a number four neonatal tracheostomy. This is a number four pediatric tracheostomy tube. As you can see, the length is way different between the two. Here's a number five pediatric trach. Here's a number six pediatric trach, and the difference with this one is that there is a cuff on the end of it, and it has a disposable inner cannula. So you always need to know what equipment you're working with when you're working with your patient that has a tracheostomy. When you're doing trach care, you would need sterilized Q-tips. You would need some drain sponges, a new trach tie, perhaps different kinds of sterile catheters for sectioning, hydrogen peroxide, sterile water, cups to mix that in, and of course your gloves. When you're dealing with your patient that's a child that has a tracheostomy, you might have an apparatus such as this, which is called an aerosol mask. This may be hooked to oxygen or to air, and its sole idea is to provide heat and humidity to that artificial airway because you're bypassing your natural heat and humidity track. If you, your patient does not need this, perhaps, they may have what's called an artificial nose. That would be this apparatus. It slips right on to the end of the tracheostomy and it serves as well as heat, humidity, and to filter for your patient that has a tracheostomy. Other important things to have at bedside would be your Ambu bag hooked to oxygen with its mask attached and suction equipment. Reasons to suction. Your child is coughing. You need to clear visible secretions. You need to clear a blockage or obstruction and if your child is in respiratory distress. Before touching your child's tracheostomy, always make sure you wash your hands thoroughly and completely. When you have your child coming home with a tracheostomy, you need to be aware of a safe suction depth for suctioning. You need to make sure that you measure out what your suction catheter will go to to suction. You do that by taking a spare tracheostomy and measuring it from hub to tip with a measuring tape. You can see that this would be about six centimeters. You would then mark your centimeters here where that safe section depth is. Have this close by whenever you're going to section. 
This is considered a sterile procedure in the hospital, but at home it's important that you wash your hands and then have gloves on for any dealings with your tracheostomy. You would take your trach catheter out. Some are numbered and they would correlate to that measurement. So this is numbered and you would know to go to six because that's what you measured. If your st sterile catheter does not have measurements, you can simply hold it near that measuring tape and see where you should be sectioning to. Safe sectioning your baby. I have washed my hands, turned my suction equipment on, tested that it is working appropriately, and put on my gloves. Pulling your suction catheter out of its kit, you try to maintain it to be clean, but at the same time trying to measure where your safe suctioning depth is not touching the tip to anything. Attaching your suction to the suction catheter, removing any mask that's on your child, you would advance the suction catheter down the tracheostomy to your safe suction depth, not applying suction at that time. As you withdraw the catheter, you suction coming out. You then place oxygen back on your baby if necessary. Allow them to take a few breaths to recoup. You may need to repeat sectioning as necessary to clear all the secretions. This catheter is for use at home as many times as you need as long as you keep it clean in hospital it's one incident per catheter kit. To perform tracheostomy care, you will need hydrogen peroxide, sterile water, a little cup to mix these two in half and half, sterile Q-tips, sterile drain sponge, perhaps a new trach tie, and of course you always have your suction on standby. Performing tracheostomy care on your child. If your child perhaps has an artificial nose on, you would want to remove this to make this easier. First, you would remove the old drainage sponge and discard. Next, you would take your sterile Q-tips Open them. Do not touch the ends. Dip them in your half hydrogen peroxide, half sterile water solution you've prepared. You would go work from your outside to the other outside. One swipe, kind of twirling as you go. This is now done, discarded. You would take your top one and do the same to the top kind of twirl, work from outside to outside. Never scrubbing back and forth, always outside to outside. When cleaning your tracheostomy, you always want to assess the trach tie for any dirtiness or wetness and change that out as needed. When changing a trach tie out, you always need a second pair of hands to keep the trach secure and stable during this process. You would unvelcro the tie on one side and pull it out from the eyelet on the tracheostomy flange. Lift your child's head up, pull that tie out, unvelcro from the other side and pull that tie away. Your new clean tracheostomy tie is the same. It has the same velcros that will hold it in place. Lifting your baby's head again, you would slide that under their neck and line those ties up to be evenly spaced. You would then take that Velcro tie and feed it up through that eyelet on the trach flange all the while having your trach secured by your second set of hands. 
put that Velcro down on the tie so it sticks and do the same process on the other side. Always make sure that you can slide your pinky finger underneath that trach tie to make sure it's not too tight. After cleaning the tracheostomy site, you would put a new drain sponge on. This is nice and clean and sterile. You have to tuck this up underneath the trach. Always maintaining your trach secure and stable. This just tucks up underneath and you pull this up. This may take some time. One side and then you would do the other the same way. When doing trach care, your provider will instruct you as to using hydrogen peroxide and sterile water, or perhaps just sterile water. Follow their instructions. You will always have a second set of hands at bedside to help you with this process. It's important to have the tracheostomy that you're changing to and one size smaller at the bedside when you're doing this, along with some lubricating jelly, suction, and a new trach tie. The second set of hands will hold the tracheostomy in place as the person takes the trach tie off. Lifting the head again, you would slide it out and unvelcro and pull it through the eyelet on the flange. Your second tracheostomy that you're going to put in would come into the out of the package. A new tracheostomy tube with an obturator. The obturator goes into the tracheostomy tube to give it rigidity for you to be able to put it into the patient. You would squirt your lubricating jelly into this packaging for ease. Roll your tracheostomy tube in the jelly. Your second set of hands would then remove the current trach tube and you would go in at an angle. It may take some force to push it in until it's stable. At which point you would pull the obturator out, making sure that someone is holding that trach in place. You then would attach a new tracheostomy holder as you did before. If you are unable to replace the same size trach, attempt to use the smaller trach. You may also need to emergently change the trach if there is an obstruction or it accidentally comes out. That is why it is important to always have your emergency supplies with you at all times. If you have an emergency, you would perform BLS as you would for any other child. The only difference would be if you have an AMBU bag, your AMBU would attach to the tracheostomy to deliver breaths. If you do not have an AMBU bag, it would be mouth to trach. In the event of an emergency where the tracheostomy becomes dislodged and you're not able to replace it immediately, call for help, have someone block the stoma site. You would use an AMBU bag with a mask at that point to deliver breaths or mouth to mouth. If you have a patient that has a larger trach that possibly has a disposable inner cannula, when you're doing trach care, you would do it the same. Clean underneath, clean up above. You would stabilize your trach, then take the inner cannula out by pushing on these wings. It comes out. 
you would either clean this inner cannula to put it back in, or if you have available a new inner cannula, you would take that out of its packaging and it goes back into the tracheostomy, pinching those wings and seating it into the flange. Call your doctor if there is any redness, pain, or bleeding of the stoma. If you see any changes in the color or thickness of secretions, if your child has a fever, if he or she has shortness of breath or trouble breathing, if you have any difficulty inserting the trach tube or suction catheter, or as instructed by your doctor. Ask your nurse or doctor if you have any questions or concerns caring for your child with a trach. We hope this video helps increase your confidence in caring for your child at home.